get a doctor to test that if you're a man. Okay, so that's another thing. Between the conventional doctors like the one we had in San Diego versus the... Um, um, you mean the other way around? The, yeah, well, versus the, the endocrinologist, right? Okay. The endocrinologist will not test you for estrogen. The conventional doctor or unconventional doctors, okay, they test every single uh, hormone in your body. They test for the females and they test for males and they test all the hormones, okay? Now... Um, what was the other thing that we wanted to say? Another thing I wanted to, to talk about was also um, cancer, prostate cancer, okay? The one thing that, tell them what you told me earlier about estrogen being carcinogenic okay. and what we thought was going to happen. So one of the warnings that they have about uh, when they give you testosterone is it, it might cause prostate cancer or whatever. Now, since when does high testosterone levels correlate to prostate cancer. Young men have sky-high testosterone levels, yet they're not dying like flea or flies because of prostate cancer, are they? It's when they're old and they have high estrogen levels and low testosterone levels that they get prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. More recent research has shown that estrogen is actually uh, one of the factors when it comes to prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. So once again, uh, and this is maybe just to piss off the feminists in the world, testosterone might be an anabolic controlled substance, but estradiol, the main form of estrogen in the body, is a recognized carcinogen. How about that? Yeah, exactly. So think about this, okay? Whenever people, whenever the doctors put you on a birth control pill, you have a warning there that says, okay, um, do not smoke or, uh, what's that warning again? Um, do not smoke when you're on this product or something because you can increase your chances of cancer. Think about that for a minute. <laughs> what is it that's causing the cancer? Okay, they're trying to tell you that smoking when you're on this increases your risk of cancer. But it's not the smoking that increases your risk of cancer. I mean, the estrogen is what they're giving you that increases your risk of cancer. The longer and the higher levels of estrogen is that's in your body, the more um, chances you have of getting female cancers, okay? So I was talking to the veterinarian the other day, and she was, uh, because we have, love, and this is still hormones, I'm just talking about dogs, because okay? this is all the information that we're getting together for you guys. Um, my one dog, Lola, is not fixed. Um, Coco is fixed, right? I didn't want to, to fix Lola, but we also don't want to breed with her because I'm, I know that their personalities change. So when I was talking to the doctor, okay, what is the first thing that she said to me? If you do not, okay, um, fix a dog, get a female dog fixed, okay? After, a, I think, three or four years or whatever, her chances of breast cancer and ovarian cancer increases, it doubles, Okay, and after five years, it doubles again, and it keeps on doubling and doubling and doubling. That's because their estrogen levels don't go away. So you, here you have a, a dog that's fixed that they, they hardly ever have a chance of getting cancer. Yet the dog that you don't get fixed, they start getting cancerous tumors in their breast tissue. It's female cancers that has all everything to do with estrogen. So when a female, like uh, when a female goes into a menopausal time. People want to, the doctors want to pump estrogen into your body. But estrogen at that point in life is the exact same thing that causes breast cancer, ovarian cancer, and all the bloody system crap in your body. And yet, they, they don't put the one, they don't put two and two together and get four. They just treat like they're, I find them with a the medical, um, the way it is, the medical system the way it is. Nothing they do is preventative. They just take each thing and each category and they treat that thing. And whatever called, you know, whatever happens at that point in time when we get to the end of this treatment, we'll just treat whatever side effect you get from that treatment. And, oh, shit, you know, if you get cancer, oh, well, okay, we'll just do this and this and this and this. It's like there's no prevention. There's no ahead thinking. There's no, okay, maybe we shouldn't be putting these women on, on um, uh, estrogen because they're cancer. Like, which women is it that get breast cancer? It's not girls that's 20. And in their 30s, that gets breast cancer. It's females that go into menopause it's, it's, or, or pre-menopause. It's all females that go into a higher age group that um, uh, uh, gets estrogen replacement. Estrogen is one of the worst things in the world that you can get. And there's nothing good about estrogen. The only time in your life that you need high levels of estrogen is to get a baby. 
once you have once you're done having children you do not need high levels of estrogen and your body can control what you need if you get the right stuff at the right time so we, we, we didn't finish up the symptoms okay there was the, the libido thing okay so what happens let's talk about some more symptoms about females going on um, testosterone now when you go and see a doctor that knows what he's doing okay he will test you your um, body for uh, testosterone females as well so we're talking about females now testosterone um, estrogen and um, progesterone okay we'll get to progesterone and estrogen in a different video so we'll just deal with the testosterone so what happens with women whenever they go up higher in age okay the first thing is they have all these bodily changes they start the hot flashes they start you know feeling crappy they get night sweats blah 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 but that's not the main thing their libido goes away completely they have vaginal dryness they have every friggin thing that turns you off of sex for the rest of your life okay and that's not what it's supposed to be like when you get older I mean here you are you've had your children you know your kids are growing up and you're like basically uh, you know over the wall you feel like crap all the time you have the hot flushes you have the menopause or the premenopause or all of those symptoms anything ranging from migraines and all of those things right however remember I told you guys in the previous video I went into full-blown menopause at age 38 okay so I was lucky enough I mean I see people around me suffer through menopausal symptoms and it's just normal you know okay well that's where we are right now so we can treat the husbands like shit you know because we yell at them all the time because they have to understand because our hormones are screwed up and that is absolutely unnecessary okay um so what has testosterone done for me now remember when you get testosterone from a doctor a female is not going to get the same amount of testosterone as a male because we do not need <laughs> anywhere near that amount of testosterone However, females do have testosterone, progesterone, and estrogen. So within, so, so, okay. So first, the first thing is I never, ever experienced, because the moment I basically went into menopause, I found the right doctor. So just be, when I started getting all miserable and being, you know, not happy and all of those things, I found the doctor, tested my hormones. He's been treating me for three years, three years now. I have no menopausal symptoms. What, Johan can tell you what I'm like ever since I've been on testosterone. Now, I'm not only on testosterone. Remember, we're only discussing testosterone. I'm getting bioidentical hormone replacement therapy overall, okay? So the first thing we're discussing is testosterone. What is my personality like when I... Uh, diff, how is my person, diff, personality different from when I used to be on the pill, had the periods and all of those wonderful things as opposed to having the testosterone and having my, my um, hormone levels? normal it's heaven she's stable she's the same <laughs> all the time mm -hmm. and uh the libido is pretty good <laughs> yes that is true <laughs> and none of that messy crap every four weeks so it's awesome <laughs> okay so that's the one thing i mean a lot of women as especially as, as we've been discussing on the group and people who don't even come and talk on the group have the same problem where they grow they you know that they grow older and the first thing that happens is their libido go out the door so their husbands might be normal but it, it i'm telling you something at our age i'm talking about from 40 to 50 and 50 and up or whatever people it's not normal to have sex once a week once every two weeks once a month okay because when I was in the salon the females that came to my salon that I was treating you know we would discuss hormones and talk about things and blah 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 and all of them had the same issue they were pretty happy with having sex once a month that is not good it's not good for your relationship it's not good for your uh, well-being it's not well good for your emotional well-being it's not good for you or your husband okay because it's a, there there is a lot of things that it happens good in your body and we'll talk about some sexual hormones Johan's actually better at that than me things that happen in your body um, when you have sex whatever gets released and blah 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 all of those things right but testosterone in women declines completely whenever you go into like you remember when you're young you have all three T P and E okay the testosterone levels decline so all of a sudden you have horrible symptoms like vaginal dryness you have irritable you're irritable you're, you're you're just not you're just you know our poor husband suffer through all our crap because it's all hormonal we can't help for what we're doing but I'm telling you now that there is help okay I think at this point in time with me being on testosterone um, or on the right that my levels are actually 
better. Johan and my sex life has been better than even when we got married. Oh yeah. You know, it's it's like when you when you just get married. I mean, there's all kinds of other stuff. You're shy. You this is like this emotional stuff or, or whatever going on. But when you're test when a when a female okay. So shall we go into like let's just go into the nitty gritty stuff, okay? Talk about vaginal vaginal dryness, which is the one thing that causes pain during sex. I mean, you can lube until you're purple in the face, but it, it's all uncomfortable. It's not nice. It's not blah 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 blah. So when whenever you're on testosterone like I am right now, okay, you do not experience any of those symptoms even during the day. I'm walking around. And my downstairs feels like a 20-year-old all day long, moist from the moment I get up until the day, to the, the, the evening that you go to sleep. It is not estrogen that does that, okay? It is testosterone. So that's the first thing. So, for fem- like Johan said right in the beginning of the, the, the video, testosterone actually gets converted into estrogen into your body. It does, it's not just for my, I'm, I'm pretty sure he said men has this thing, blah, 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 but it's actually for females, it works the same? Yes, it does. <clears throat> same way. So we'll correct that. So what he said in the beginning was males, but the same goes for females. So if you think about it, okay, females do not need to get their estrogen replaced because your body knows exactly how much estrogen you need. The pill doesn't know how much estrogen you need. So if your doctor, if you have a good doctor that knows what he's doing and he replaces you with a, with a low level ester, with a low level testosterone, your body will take some of that testosterone and convert it into just the right amount of estrogen you need. So your body is controlling the amount of estrogen that's going floating around in your blood, okay? Whereas if a doctor gives you estrogen, he, he doesn't know how much you need because your body knows better than the doctor. Well, when you're talking about the conversion of testosterone into estrogen in females, uh, the most common breast cancer drugs for women who have had breast cancer is two classes. One is aromatase inhibitors. And what is that? That is substances that block the enzyme that converts testosterone into estrogen, right? And what does that mean? And the other class is uh, selective estrogen receptor modulators, such as tamoxifen. Those things block the estrogen receptors. So there is estrogen in your blood floating around, but the receptors are not working because it's like every receptor has a... it's, It's like, think of a lock and a key. If you put a key, the wrong key, into a lock, uh, you can get the key that will fit into a lock, but it won't open mm-hmm. the lock. Mm-hmm. And as long as the wrong key is in the lock, the right key cannot go in and mm-hmm. open the lock. Mm-hmm. So if you think mm-hmm. of the enzyme and the key as, the, I mean, the, the enzyme would be the lock and the substrate testosterone that has to fit into the lock and do, has to be testosterone. But if the receptor is blocked, uh, it cannot happen, so that's the... So, here is my question. For you guys, not for my husband, for you guys. Why? You always have to ask why. People, the more you ask why, the more you learn in life, okay? Why would a doctor put an estrogen blocker into a woman's body who's had breast cancer? Why? Think about that, Okay. Everything that we've said so far, does this not kind of prove that? Because the doctors, they pump you full of estrogen, wait until you get breast cancer, remove your breast, and they put, then put estrogen blockers in your body so that you can't have any more estrogen because they know full well the goddamn estrogen is what gave you the freaking breast cancer in the first place, okay? So why, does, why do they do that? Do you see how backwards the system is, the medical system? We give you one bunch of shit. Then we wait until the aftermath, and then we'll treat the aftermath, you know, whatever the diseases you get. So it's like, it's like, it's like making rules. I don't know if you guys have ever been in companies where, or anywhere in your life in a situation where there's a rule, okay? That rule doesn't work. It seems to just blow everything up. So instead of taking that rule down or law down, you know, in a country and making a new law, they just add another law to that law. And then they add another law to that law. So that's what the doctors in the medical system do. They treat you for one thing, with medication that makes you so sick, that has so many side effects, so many ill things that that fucks up your body completely. And they don't care about that because you're not there yet. 
then when you get there, then it's like, oh, okay, now she's got breast cancer from all the estrogen that I pumped in her, so I guess we have to give, take her breasts off, okay? So now they cut your breasts off. Then they put you on estrogen blocks. And it just keeps going and going and going and going. And they just deal with the situation at hand. And whatever illness you have that you're not dying of, they just let it go. If they, they, you know, they can't treat it. If you're not dying, they're not going to bother treating it. So the medical system is so freaking backward. It is so important. I know you're going to say this. so important for you guys to start doing your own research and not just believe everything a damn doctor tells you because they don't know everything. You go ahead, honey. Another part of the problem is that people are not willing to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. Meaning, here's my fight. Now I'm going to piss off a lot of people again. Type 2 diabetes is something that you do to yourself. If you get type 2 diabetes, it's okay, probably on your own fault. Let's stop the video here and then do the type 2 diabetes. I'm just trying to point out that even though you full well might know that you're eating crap that's going to eventually kill you, you're going to keep on doing it till you run into problems, right? Same with taking care of your health. People will just not exercise, eat whatever shit, until they run into problems. Mm. Human nature is part of the problem. The doctors are the other part. But yeah. you got to do your own research and look after yourself. And when you go to the doctor, don't just accept his word. Yeah. Tell him what you want. Yeah. Don't ask him... Go with your research like your hand does. A lot of doctors don't know a lot of stuff. So whenever we have a problem, Johan will do the research first, grab the research papers, print them out, go to the doctor and say to him, this and this and this is my issue, and here's the research to show that whatever treatment you want to do ain't going to work. Okay? They don't like that, but you know, the doctors who don't mind it learn a lot. Okay? My doctor in Canada, for instance, he was completely perplexed by what we, Johan and I did, okay? Because he had so many type 2 diabetic clients that he sent to uh, dietitians. Oh, yeah, I know. Won't go there, okay? So after talking to me and realized that, you know, you, between Johan and me, we've cured six at that point in time. I remember that specific year when I went to the doctor just before we left. Six diabetic people, six, di six people we cured from, diabe from diabetes, okay? I went to the doctor and I showed him, the I said to him, these are the people, this is blah, blah, this is, he ended up, and then unfortunately we left, but he said to me, okay, from now on, he's not going to send his <laughs> clients to dietitians anymore, he's going to refer them to a dietitian and then give them my business card and then say, uh, because legally, you know, through the medical system, he's not allowed to say, okay, you go to these people that are not specialists or whatever, right? So um, that was his plan, because the, the medical system do not, I mean, the way uh, uh, things are done is so controlled by, I don't know what the hell is controlled by, but we shouldn't be talking about dieting. We should actually just talk about, think about the shit you put in your body. It's part Gas, of hormonal sugar, health. It's part of hormonal health. If you do not get the right oils, your hormones are going to be screwed up, the, the healthy oils. If you put too much sugar in your body, sugar destroys all the cells inside your body. All of those things, all of the crap that you put in your, in your mouth, okay, is going to eventually uh, do something in your system. Touch it in some or other way. And that includes testosterone. Now, I 